in this lecture we see energy bands we know that in solids molecules are so closed due to this closeness electrons in the atoms of the molecules can move into the orbitals of the neighboring atoms and hence electrons orbitals can overlap in solids and due to this overlapping of the atomic orbitals we can have energy bands some bands are fully filled some bands are empty and some bands are partially filled and based on these energy bands we can have a metal a semiconductor a an insulator and semi metal so first let me write this line that we know that the molecules in solids are so closed that the electrons in the atoms of the molecules tend to move into the orbitals of neighboring atoms as a result of this overlapping or this movement of the electrons from one atom to another atom electrons orbitals overlap in the solids so due to the closeness of the molecules there is an overlapping in the atomic orbitals and due to this overlapping in the solids instead of single energy levels single energy level there will be bands of energy there will be bands of energy levels formed so due to this overlapping of the electronic orbitals in the solids 
instead of single energy levels there will be bands of energy levels that is formed in the solid so these sets of energy levels and obviously which are closely packed are called as energy bands energy bands so based on these energy bands we can have valence band conduction band and forbidden band so there are three types of energy bands that is valence band conduction band and forbidden band and all of we know that valence bands are normally completely filled where the conduction bands are completely empty and the gap between these valence band and conduction band is known as forbidden band so first let me explain what is valence band the electrons move in the atoms in certain energy levels but the energy of the electrons in the innermost shell that is near to the nucleus of the atom is higher than the energy of the outermost cell we know that the electrons near to the nucleus can have higher energy than the electrons that are far away from the nucleus so the nucle the cells near the nucleus are known as 
innermost cells and cells after in innermost cells are known as outermost cells or cell the electrons that are present in the outermost cell are called as valence electrons and these electrons that is these valence electrons are containing a series of energy levels and form a and form an energy band which is called as valence band thus valence band is the band having the highest occupied electronic energy states so normally valence bands are completely filled by the electrons and these are outermost the these are the energy levels of the outermost electrons second one is conduction band we know that the valence electrons are so loosely bound to the nucleus that even 
एट रूम टेम्परेचर शू ऑफ द वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स लीव द वैलेंस बैंड टू बी फ्री these are called free electrons as they tend to move towards the neighboring neighboring atoms these free electrons are responsible for the electrical conductivity in the solids and are called as conduction electrons the band that contains these conduction electrons is called as conduction band thus the conduction band is the band having the lowest occupied electronic energy levels or states so free electrons can be found in the conduction band third one is forbidden band
द एनर्जी गैप बिटवीन द वेलेंस बैंड एंड कंडक्शन बैंड इज कॉल्ड एज फॉरबिडन बैंड और फॉरबिडन गैप वाट आर यू वॉन्ट टू सेट एंड दिस बैंड इज एम्पट्टी एम्पट्टी एंड हैंस no electron stay in this band the valence electrons while going to the conduction band can easily pass through this band if the forbidden band is large it means the valence band electrons आर आर टाइटली बाउंड टू द न्यूक्लियस इन ऑर्डर टू push the electrons out of the valence band some external energy is required which would be equal to the forbidden band 
so there are three types of energy bands that is valence band conduction band and forbidden band and if we draw these energy bands this is the energy scale so there are some innermost band after that we have outermost band which are known as valence band and after this valence band we can have conduction band electrons are free in conduction band and these electrons are responsible for the electrical conductivity in the solids and this gap or the levels in this gap is known as forbidden band or forbidden gap normally we are interested in the minimum of the conduction band let's say it's ec and top of the valence band which is ev so here we can write that sometime <coughs> this forbidden band is also known as band gap which can be represented as ez so here ez is equal to ec minus ev so this is the forbidden band or forbidden gap or energy gap so based on this forbidden gap we can further divide solids into four categories that is insulator metal semiconductor and semi metal so based on these energy bands we can have insulator we can have semiconductors metals and semi metal semi metals i think this semi metal is new for you so now let's see the energy bands of a insulator we know that insulators are such materials in which
द इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्शन कैन नॉट टेक प्लेस ड्यू टू ए लार्जर फॉरबिडन गैप और बैंड द रेजिस्टिविटी रेजिस्टिविटी of the insulators can vary from 10 raised to the power 20 to the 10 raised to the power 8 ohm centimeter their energy gap or band gap or forbidden gap whatever you want to say it is generally generally larger than 2.5 electron volt so in insulator the band gap is higher then semiconductors semiconductors have an energy band structure similar to that of insulators however the energy gap between valence band and conduction band is smaller than that of insulators therefore a significant number of electrons can be thermally excited from the valence band to the conduction band even at the 
room temperature. The resistivity, resistivity of semiconductors can vary. from 10 raised to the power minus 4 to 10 raised to the power 8 ohm centimeter. So, third one is metals we know that valence band and conduction band are overlapped in metals. Therefore, they can easily conduct the electricity. The resistivity of the metals can vary from 10 raised to the power minus 8 to 10 raised to the power minus 4 ohm centimeter. And now let me explain about semi metal. In semi metals, there is a small overlapping between the bottom of the conduction band and the top of the valence band. For example, bismuth is a semi metal. Bismuth, arsenic, antimony, they are semi metals. And it is worth to note that.
there is a big difference between a semiconductor and a semi metal so there is a big difference between a semi metal and a semiconductor in semi metal conductivity is always non zero while in a semiconductor conductivity is zero at zero temperature or zero kelvin temperature and we know that a semiconductor behaves like insulator at zero kelvin temperature so if we draw energy band diagrams for insulator semiconductor and metals we can draw these energy bands like this that is in insulator the valence band is completely filled while the conduction band is completely empty and this is the energy gap between these valence band and conduction band and in a semiconductor we can see that valence band are st still completely filled and conduction band is still completely empty but the energy gap between valence band and conduction band is smaller than the insulator so we know that in metals there is an overlapping between the valence band and the conduction band many electrons are always present in the conduction band of a metal therefore the electrical conductivity of a metal is very high as compared to insulator and semiconductor and in semi metal we have to draw energy bands in a vertical manner and here we can see that before completely filling of the valence band some electrons are going to conduction band in a semi metal so this is the difference between a metal and a semi metal and a semiconductor and a semi metal so even at zero temperature there are some electrons in the conduction band of a semi metal therefore the conductivity of the semi metal is non zero at zero kelvin temperature so this is all about energy bands in next lecture we will see the types of energy bands in semiconductors